Hi, my name is Bernard and I welcome you to this testimonial of Dow Corning about unit yield performance and production accounting using SigmaFine. This presentation was initially recorded in 2013 as part of a series of webinars featuring solutions that interoperate with the Pi system of OSIsoft. As you will see, the topic and the content of this presentation continue to be very relevant today. We hope you enjoy it and find the answers that you are looking for. At the end of the recording, we will explain how to get more information. Hi all, my name is Erica Ferguson, Partner Manager at OSI Soft. Welcome to the Partner Solution Showcase webinar series with Dow Corning, PIMSoft, and OSI Soft. Today we will focus on unit yield performance and plant production accounting with SigmaFine and the Pi system infrastructure. Meet Brian. Brian works for Dow Corning, established specifically to explore and develop the potential of silicones in 1943. Today, they have over 7,000 products and 60% of their business is outside of the United States. Brian is the Pi technology steward. He has been with Dow Corning for 23 years, mostly focused on manufacturing automation, integration, and quality management systems. Brian cares about the big picture. He'll say things like, getting the silicon to our diverse end users all over the world is my day-to-day -day job. Brian does not have time to care about all the little details, such as the intricacies of accounting mass balances. But some time ago, the auditors called him. There is a new regulation he has to comply with, and information needs to be provided more frequently. Months and months will simply not do. Then the salespeople called. A solar panel manufacturer has signed a big order. They want to be absolutely certain that the delivered product meets their purity requirements. They need the data. Brian feels he's now a data middleman. He has different solutions and components developed by different organizations over the past 14 years to perform accounting mass balances and to track supply. But it is a support and maintenance nightmare with very little flexibility. Things are getting missed and delays are happening due to lack of information. Brian just can't get the right data to the right place at the right time very easily and new requests for information are constantly arriving. But Brian has Pi, so he can provide the data to the solar manufacturer after having made a few changes. And then he called Dr. Roberto Linares, Vice President at PIMSoft. PIMSoft is an OSI partner and builds applications on top of the Pi infrastructure. Roberto uh, thought their product SigmaFine would get the job done. Roberto has lots of experience in applying information systems to help customers optimize their process and production accounting systems. He collaborated on the development of SigmaFine at OSIsoft, where he designed a new software module and reconciliation algorithms. Having Pi as the foundation will prove to be ideal for Brian. Working with PIMSoft and the staff, Brian now has a standard for how to model and execute accounting mass balance calculations. It's deployed across the company, and the best thing, the solution runs without intervention. He has a solution that auditors love, and an unintended benefit delighting his CFO is improved visibility of financial impact of process operations. Let's hear more about how OSIsoft and PIMSoft with their product signifying was able to solve Brian's problems. Brian will share more about Dow Corning and what was accomplished. Then Roberto will explain what SigmaFine can do and the highlight demonstration followed by questions and answers. Please submit your questions in writing during the webinar. Verbal questions will also be accepted, time permitting, and there's always possibilities for follow-up. So what exactly did Dow Corning, PIMSoft, and OSIsoft produce together? How and why? Brian, it's all yours. Thank you, Erica. <clears throat> As Erica said, uh, Dow Corning is a um, company that deals with silicones, and uh, our business involves a variety of silicones, uh, particularly high-priority silicones used for, silicon, or for solar panel manufacturing. One of the things we pride ourselves on is innovation, um, not only in our products, but also in the way that we approach business. Uh, one of those examples is a business model that we've developed uh, called Ziameter, that allows customers to buy products that are exactly what they need, and uh, they don't need to they don't need to buy a lot of extra services or anything like that. So these are commodity products 
We also have uh, other products that are using our standard Dow Corning business model that allows you to buy services as well as the product, and that's worked out very well for us. Um, I'm located in the Carrollton, Kentucky manufacturing site, uh, which you can see here on the screen. Uh, we were busily preparing for the Kentucky Derby, so that's been exciting for us. The weather is starting to um, change and turn nice. The flowers are in bloom. The trees are leaving out, and everybody's excited for the Derby that's coming up. Um, you can see that here we've got about 30 sites uh, distributed around the world, a global presence in uh, North America, South America, Europe, and Asia, uh, nothing in Africa at this time. Um, I am the Pi Technology Steward, and that means that I have responsibility for uh, planning the direction of the Pi Technologies. This includes not only the, the Pi product that most of you are aware of, but also includes, uh, for us, Sigmafine and another product called Arlink. Um, I've been working with the Pi system since about 1998, and I'm part of a global manufacturing automation um, group in our organization, and that uh, straddles the IT organization and the manufacturing organization within Dow Corning. Uh, we are currently using Sigmafine. Uh, we're using the, the previous version of Sigmafine that runs on the older version of AF, but we're, we will be migrating. Uh, we have OSI Soft's Pi product, and we are an EA customer. Uh, we use the IT monitor um, interfaces with that, and that's a significant uh, benefit for us. We have about 20 Pi collectives globally. Uh, some of the other significant software that we use in our organization, uh, we're an SAP user. We're using ECC6. And uh, one of the things that's somewhat unique about us is we have one single instance of SAP that uh, supports all of our sites globally. Uh, we're a thermal electron sample manager LIMS user. Uh, we've got a number of instances where we have uh, web-based RF um, data collection for tracking packages, and we're using uh, Pi and SAP with that particular application. And then we've got a very wide variety of control systems, you know, probably about one of everything uh, with all the different manufacturing sites we have around the world. Uh, so uh, for Sigmafine, our problem was this. We had a number of sites that were trying to do mass balances, they over the years created their own solutions for this. You know, some were Excel based, some were using uh, OSI's ACE uh, calculation engine or the predecessor to that from Excel called Edict. Um, and you know, some were just other custom applications that uh, provided the integration with SAP. These worked okay. Um, certain applications worked better than others. Uh, we didn't have a lot of transparency with them, uh, but you know we we realized quickly that we needed something that was more consistent and something that was much more uh, supportable. So we embarked on this project to to look at Sigmafine, which we actually looked at back in 1995, just after OSI had purchased them, and uh, we found that that was a a very good product, but the user interface at the time was was not up to what we were looking for. So we, we waited for a while, and then we came back and revisited this in about 2009. Uh, so at that time, we our strategy was to find something that was easy for users to learn, uh, something that had a uh, high degree of flexibility, which we didn't have in our current solutions, and could handle a high volume of SAP transactions. And we needed something that was comprehensive and could be standardized uh, with the way it was rolled out and implemented. So we started with two sites that were using different legacy solutions, and we developed those projects and started doing the modeling. We established and documented the standards on how we would be building the models, how we would be um, setting up our templates, and uh, how, would we, how we would be rolling that out. Uh, one of the design requirement, requirements was to make sure that this was um, SOX compliant and it's easy for the auditors to understand. And we were pretty successful at that. Uh, we've got some presentations that we use now that uh, make it um, relatively easy for the auditors to understand or as easy as possible, uh, much more so than what we had experienced in the past with our other solutions. We did take the best features from our legacy solutions and try to incorporate those where, where it made sense. Um, we are able to run this now in, a, in an unintended mode so that it runs automatic 
it's able to recover from SAP or PI outages. Um, and the other thing that we did is we developed a natural work group of signifying users that can be used to coach and support other users. And as uh, users transition in and out of these roles, they can depend on these um, natural work group users uh, to provide them some assistance. This is an example of one of the, a portion of one of the models that we developed. And uh, we got to this point by starting with training. We had SigmaFine come in and provide us a condensed um, three-day course of their standard training, uh, focusing on the areas that we were interested in, primarily the accounting mass balance portion of that. Uh, and then we supplemented that with two days of coaching. And uh, so after we completed the three-day course and everybody was fairly comfortable with how SigmaFine would work, then we began to, to look at how we would model the, the particular processes that we were interested in. And during that time, we developed the, uh, a standardized database with templates um, and some example predefined elements uh, for those templates. We developed some standard naming conventions so that you could understand uh, what the element was, what the connections to it were, and so on by just looking at the element name. And then we also developed some other standardized Excel workbooks using the add-ins for AF and SigmaFine to facilitate the element definition. And uh, one of the other things that really enabled um, our success was creating some custom data references. This is just a, a flow chart of how our model works in the different processing steps. I won't go through all the steps here, but I'll, I'll point out a couple of, of key things. Um, one of the areas that we were um, that was important to us is to, to be able to manage through shutdowns or maintenance uh, within our model. So if we take a particular part of a process or even a plant down, then we need to be able to, to let the rest of the model run. So we created this concept of using shutdown layers uh, within SigmaFine. The other area is uh, integration with SAP. As an input to our model, we use SAP process orders and uh, material movements. And the movements are used to, to create the transfers, which are coming in as, as inputs or uh, receipts or ship points um, for the model. The other thing, and this was based on experience with our own applications that we use for, for mass balances, we need to make sure we did a really good job with validating the PI data coming in. SigmaFine handles this to a certain extent, but we wanted to carry it further. So we added some additional steps before we even got to the um, the processing steps that would be standard to the normal SigmaFine case um, to, adu to do additional PI tag validation, and I'll cover more of that in, in just a moment. Once we executed the, the SigmaFine steps, then we would do some uh, additional validation and, uh, of the quality of the reconciliation, and then we would build our SAP transactions based on the, the flow uh, values. Uh, and those transmat Transactions would be transmitted to SAP in real time, and any errors that were encountered would be would come back, and those would be sent to uh, key end users. And as a final check, uh, we also compare the the physical inventory that was calculated by the model with the SAP inventory after the transactions were ex executed, and any discrepancies would be noted and and sent through an email to users that needed to be aware of that. So that was a really popular um, piece of functionality, particularly with the auditors, to let them know that this is something that we're monitoring on a regular basis. And in many cases, for most of our sites, it's multiple times a day, you know, four or, or more. Uh, the SAP integration, we did uh, a lot of, well, we did some custom uh, development work and in SAP, develop some of our own custom SAP or RFCs uh, in SAP uh, and some .NET applications. A lot of the SAP integration could be d done using standard uh, SAP BOPIs and RFCs uh, and web services as well. But at the time when we started this, uh, some of that information wasn't available, and we had some custom uh, functionality and some of the uh, integration that we had done in the past with our other applications that we wanted to carry forward. So that worked out really well. Um, the .NET application was, was used as a front end to provide the, uh, the personnel supporting this 
a way to do troubleshooting, to manually execute cases if necessary, and uh, to help with uh, model development. Uh, for the PyTag validation that I mentioned earlier, uh, one significant piece of this is the ability to copy previous values from uh, what we deem as a successful case for tank levels and totalizers. Our experience has shown us in the past that if we tried to just pull the value at the start of the case from, from Pi, then it may not be exactly the same as it was at the end of the last case. So since our cases are pretty much back-to-back, -back, we wanted to use the ending value of the previous case. That way it uh, separated us from any issues with exception and compression processing, and we had a much more consistent result. Uh, we also performed uh, additional PyTag validation, and we came up with five rules at this point uh, that, that we use to, to make sure the data coming in is as good as we can expect. So we validate to make sure that the server and tag name are actually accurate and, and exist. We look to make sure that there's good data at the start and the end of the case. We make sure that the data is current by comparing the snapshot timestamp to the current time that the case is executing. Uh, we look to make sure that there's a minimum percentage of good data for the time range of the case. And then we do a reasonableness check to make sure that the data that we're getting back and the way we've, and if we've asked it to be summarized, the, the summarized value falls within some sort of reasonable minimum and maximum for that particular case. And that's dynamic depending on the, the, uh, the duration of the case. If any of those rules fail, then we have the option of deciding what we want to do with that. We can either ignore it, we can take it out of cert, that element out of service, or we can just halt the, that particular case altogether. We tend to use the latter because most of our values coming in are critical enough that we don't want to create any erroneous uh, SAP transactions. And we do a similar sort of a check with our SAP transactions in terms of making sure that the quantity that we're generating the transaction for falls within some sort of reasonable uh, values. Uh, the .NET application that I mentioned earlier, which was uh, uses the user interface, this is just a, a simple screenshot of that. It's got a, a case runner um, set of buttons that's very similar to what you would normally see uh, as a case runner for SigmaFind. It shows the end user um, output information and values they can use to troubleshoot along the way. It allows them to do some reprocessing of SAP transactions, to test web services, and a variety of things like that. It's primarily used for troubleshooting and early on in um, model development. Uh, some of the other things that we, we've done is we're actually outputting uh, a lot of result data from each case to pie tags that we uh, generate uh, dynamically. And some of those are metrics of how well a case has run and how well the, uh, the case, the reconciliation has performed. So this is just an example of that to show you what those metrics are, and you can look at those over time. And uh, here you'll see trends for the short term and the long term to see if that case is running consistently and if there's anything you need to be concerned about. These metrics can be indicators of if you've got uh, instrumentation issue um, with your meters or things like that and allow you to drill down to look at more detail. This is an example of one of the emails that we get that shows reconcile quality for uh, particular meters. And, and here, uh, the users would be expected to take a look at this and monitor it. And if there's anything that um, they get an email for, to, to investigate that and make sure that uh, the data that's coming in and the instrumentation is, is performing as expected. So our current status to SigmaFine is that we have it installed at five sites globally, uh, one in Asia, one in Europe, and three in the U.S. Uh, our complexity of our models vary from one that's got about 5,000 elements in it to some that have less than 100. Uh, so far to date, uh, we've completed 24,000 cases and executed about 3 million SAP transactions. So it's a, it's a significant benefit for us. In terms of our use of Pi, uh, we started using Pi in 1995. Today, we have 19 Pi collectives for manufacturing sites and three um, collectives for our IT monitor servers, which you, we use to monitor our IT infrastructure for the organization. 
that includes servers, workstations, and uh, our network infrastructure. Um, and the network infrastructure monitoring has been very beneficial for us. Uh, we have five SigmaFind Pi servers. There's about well, there's over 500,000 Pi tags that are currently in service. Some of the key applications we we have that utilize Pi data. Uh, the typical process monitoring and analysis that most people do. We also have uh, TIP and OEE applications where we automatically generate loss events and then do classification of those to determine uh, reliability of processes and what their TIP and OEE numbers are. And that's a, a pretty big program in our organization. Uh, we do transactional automation with SAP um, using process data that's coming through PI. Uh, we've got a number of ways that we do that, and we've been pretty successful and continue to roll that out. Uh, we use it for regulatory reporting with the EPA and other other agencies around the world. Uh, we use it to, to monitor and collect historical data for our key IT assets, as I mentioned. And then we have many um, custom SAP MII applications that we use for analysis and uh, visualization uh, for our end users. So some of the lessons that we learned. Um, one, make sure that everybody's talking off the same sheet of music and using the same terminology. Uh, typically, engineers may think of a, a mass balance as one thing, but what we're doing is we're using it as an accounting mass balance, which isn't quite as detailed as, as what they maybe, uh, maybe would have done um, in their own uh, situations. We are beginning to do some of that and uh, plan on using SigmaFind for that, but that wasn't our initial need. Uh, training was important, and... Um, the training is begin to, beginning to change over time as people transition out of the roles after the models that were initially developed. So the the training needs are different from for somebody picking up support for a model than they were for training somebody to initially develop a model. Uh, from a model development standpoint, spend your time up front to develop a standardized environment um, for your templates, um, examples of your elements, and uh, there's a lot of elements that you get out of the box for SigmaFind for an accounting mass balance that you probably don't even need, so you can get rid of those. Uh, SigmaFind was very good at helping us go through that as an exercise with our initial training, and uh, I think that paid big dividends in the long run. Uh, I would highly recommend having SigmaFind back for additional coaching sessions if you need it uh, to assist with your modeling. Uh, the other thing to remember is that as you develop your models, Creating the elements and defining them and all that goes pretty quickly. But the actual establishment of the relationships of those elements to one another can be time consuming and tedious. Um, there's really just no way around that. So depending, if you've got a 5,000 element model, you know, that can take some significant time to get all those relationships established, and make sure all your connections work and, uh, everything's working as you expect. I also mentioned that we developed some of our own custom data references, and uh, that worked out really well. I wouldn't be afraid to, to do that on your own. Um, they've got some good examples. They've got some wizards that you can use, and uh, I would encourage you to, to um, contact them for more details if, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, the SAP integration in terms of lessons learned, um, again, don't be afraid to, uh, to use SAP's existing RFCs and, and integration um, components to do that. Uh, it worked out really well for us. It wasn't as difficult as it may sound. Um, the other thing that we found useful is we utilize the SAP resource network as a means of, of mapping process orders to elements where you maybe produce the same material on multiple in multiple processes. You can use the resource network to differentiate uh, what process uh, that material should be produced on based on the process order. Uh, one of the biggest benefits that we saw uh, in terms of automation for executing the, uh, um, the mass balance is that it gave us much better, better visibility of the issues. We got much more timely and, and accurate inventory, but we also got uh, notified when there were issues much, uh, much faster. So in the past where we may have done um, mass balances once a week and problems would tend to accumulate and it would be very difficult to to dig in and determine where the problems were. Now we get the information much faster and we can go in and resolve things much more quickly and minimize the, the issues that we have. Some unexpected benefits that we realized from this, these projects 
is we have a much better understanding of our processes, the data, the instrumentation, and the SAP workflows. And along the way, we've actually made some improvements. Um, we've got much much improved visibility of what the financial impact is. The, the team members that were involved in these projects now understand uh, to a much greater extent um, how their processes have an, a financial impact on the organization. Uh, we also were able to improve our change control process because we found that as changes were made in the process with the control system or a variety of elements uh, in those areas, they had a direct impact on our model and their execution. So change control um, has improved and uh, the, the visibility of those changes is much better as well. Um, it also forced us to identify and then create a, uh, an improved awareness of what our critical instrumentation was and, and document that, um, so much so that we've actually added new PyTag attributes to uh, our Py system so that we can identify what the critical tags are and the, the instrumentation behind those. That's all I have for today. Uh, next, Robert, Roberto Leonares will be um, presenting uh, Sigmafine and talking to you more about that. So thank you for your time. I am Roberto Linares, and I will continue with the PIMS of presentation. The Sigma Fine system is a product that performs data validation, math balance uh, for any industrial process. The information from the system allows customers to detect data issues, inconsistencies, and provide value and valuable information to enhance operating and business decisions. The system provides a group of analysis and balance tools that can be configured according to the business requirements. These are mass, component, volume, energy, and composition tracking. The system is not only a data reconciliation application, it's also a validation tool and analysis engine, and can even be used as a business reporting platform. In addition to production accounting, SigmaFine can be used in data reconciliation and even advanced analysis such as composition tracking and component balance. SigmaFine is used within the same company to perform different business functions. Production accounting is the one of the essential functions. However, there are other functions such as unit balances, mineral protection, flow rate estimation of unmeasured streams, perform loss analysis, and component ba balancing gas plants and tracking impurities and valuable materials in a process network. Some customers also use advanced analysis, such as heat exchanger, energy balances, to estimate the performance of this type of equipment. PIMSOFT implements SigmaFine in a variety of industries. For each industry, we support different business functions. For example, vertically, you can see that in refining, we support yield accounting, for a trade zone, and crew tracking. In metals and mining, we use SigmaFine to perform component balance of key components such as gold, copper, or molybdenum. In addition to these applications, there are some horizontal functions such as raw material tracking and meter performance, performance that is used across all the industries. Sigma Fine started in the refining industry. And we continue to work in this industry, but we are also providing our solution to other industries, as you can see on this pie chart. Our software can be configured to any production accounting need, and it's being used in all continents. The, the other pie chart shows the distribution of customers around the world. Teams have developed Sigma Fine and support the product worldwide. In addition, we are a solution provider that brings expertise and engineering skills to implement projects for our customers. We also work with other companies that act as value-added resellers, and we share our best practices for the implementation of the software and knowledge to guarantee good results. SigmaFine is used in global companies such as Dow Corning, Philips 66, and Chevron, but it's also used in companies that have a single site or refinery. Many of our customers use SigmaFine at all of their facilities. We are showing a partial list of our customers on this slide. We provide different services, technical support for software, field services that include implementation and software upgrades. We also offer training for users and solution developers. For customers that want to implement the project by themselves, 
We offer coaching, auditing, and consulting. In other cases, customers prefer a turnkey implementation. For those cases, we offer the piece of methodology to complete the project success successfully. We complete all project steps from design to rollout support. For customers that require specialized solutions beyond out-of-the-box software, we also offer application management for those solutions. There are multiple benefits of served with the implementation of SigmaFi. Obviously, the solution improves the quality of data, but it also derives information such as recoveries and yields. According to, uh, to our experience, SigmaFi projects have a good return on the investment. Even before the project is completed, the customer observes the value in loss control and optimization of energy use, for example. In addition, the solution closes the gap between process and business system. The information is shared between the different users based on the role and information need. As the plant or refinery evolves, the model can keep track of the changes of configuration. The user receiving the correct training can perform these model updates and the solution can be used as a standalone system or as an enterprise-wide production accounting system. SigmaFine addresses the problem of data consistency. In order to do that, SigmaFine aggregates and transforms information using calculations and business rules. As we move to higher levels of the organization, summarized information becomes more critical and the assessment of overall quality of data is important. We have customers that monitor a few KPIs to understand the consistency and quality of the of data of their processes. The SigmaFine solution is based on AF technology, which provides a highly configurable environment that allows implementing SigmaFine in any industry. At the center of the application, SigmaFine provides a group of specialized business rules. The information from PI is requested automatically with a PI point data reference, and for relational systems such as planning tools or movement systems, we use the integration framework. A standard PI clients and Excel can be used to monitor any SigmaFine piece of information. Many customers expose SigmaFine information to ERP systems and portals using modern technologies such as SigmaFine SQL access or web services. SigmaFine also integrates easily with standard reporting tools such as SQL reporting services uh, from Microsoft and, and Crystal Reports from SAP. Those reports can be developed using the standard SQL, which simplifies greatly the creation of any formal report. The SigmaFine solution typically needs to integrate with movement data, time gauging, and planning systems. This integration can be done with a SigmaFine integration framework, which takes care of the connectivity and the transformation of data automatically. We offer some standard connectors and further connectivities. Teams could offer the implementation of the scripting required by the specific, in, in, by the specific integration need. Since data needs depend on the roles of the users, we provide different client tools to look at the information provided by SigmaFine. Typically, the IT administrator set the configuration of security within the PySystem Explorer, while the yield accountant, accountant uses the graphical modeling tool within process book. Engineers develop ad hoc reports to analyze the performance of units and processes, while planners and managers review information using web-based reports or a portal. The typical architecture of SigmaFine consists of a SigmaFine server that includes an AF server for SigmaFine use and a Microsoft SQL server. The client tool access SigmaFine via AF communication. SigmaFine gets data from the Pi, without, the Pi system without the need of any interface. ERP and business systems can access the data using the communication tools offered by Teams. Uh, thank you very much, and we will continue with the demonstration. In this demo, you can see a model of a small refinery that includes a few hundred AF elements. Our models in reality can be up to 5,000 elements, representing all meters, streams, processes, and nodes. In this case, the system is already configured to read data from Pi and perform all of the needed calculations. In order to perform an analysis, 
a mass balance, component balance, or composition tracking rule must be configured. After that step, the user simply needs to click on the collect input buttons to read data references and calculate any information required by the model. Once the data is in sigma fine, the user might execute any of the analysis rules. In this case, we are executing the mass balance analysis rule. The results of the analysis are stored in sigma fine cases and can be viewed by any of the client tools. It is also possible to publish information back to Pi. For example, some of our customers write meter statistics back to Pi to compare reconciled values versus real-time values. In the left control, you can look at any of the values for any of the elements of the model. In addition to this model, we can look at the metals and mining balance used for metal accounting. In this particular example, we are using component balance to compute copper and gold recoveries. If we would like to see the information, the component information for every analyzer and stream, we can just simply click on the component data attributes for this particular analyzers. In this case, we can look at gold, copper, iron, etc. The Sigma Fine Excel adding allows the user to configure report templates or ad hoc reports to display Sigma Fine analysis results. In this example, an engineer has created a unit balance report to display measurement and reconcile information. These reports are created once, and to update the report, the only requirement is to change the date and time, and the Excel values will change automatically. It is also possible to use the PyData link to read real-time data and create composite reports using the Excel adding. Sigma Fine configuration can be viewed and edited in the Py System Explorer. Here, we are looking at the configuration of some data references. We can also look at some data from the model. In this case, the Sigma Fine Balance Analysis Rule is taking all data and configuration to produce a mass balance that satisfies all mass balance points. After the user runs the analysis rule and performs their balance, the user might want to expose data into the reporting database. To expose data from a particular model, the user needs to select the time and model using this interface but it's also possible to schedule this process automatically. Once the process is complete, it is possible to use student reporting tools to create web-based reports. In this case, we are showing a report created using Microsoft SQL reporting services. Here we can see the products, the amounts in inventory, the net change, etc. This concludes our basic SimaFine demo that shows the main features of our product. Thank you for watching this demo. And now it's time for questions. Fortunately, we have some already, and Brian, we are going to put you on the spot and see how well you do today. Okay. Uh, an easy question here. Uh, how big are customer models, AF databases? How many elements, would you say? Uh, it varies depending on what type of process you're trying to model, the type of equipment in your process. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, we have some where we're trying to mo model a, a particular uh, train, and it's it's 5,000 elements in size. You know that includes all the the tanks and the meters and all the other um, type of objects that you would need to complete your model. But we have some other ones where we're using Sigma Fine for uh, trailer relays between sites that I think are maybe 15 to 20 uh, elements tops. So it, it can vary depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, thank you. And another one here, I think maybe a little more complex. How are customers making change, managing change control, sandbox systems, and promotion of changes to production? That's an important question. Excellent question. Uh, we struggle with this, and to be quite honest, um, it's it's easy to create your sandbox system. It's easy to do the development there. The difficult is promoting those changes into production. Um, there's a variety of ways that you can handle that. Uh, if you're making a large amount of changes, you can do all your development in your sandbox system and basically change that to your production system once you're done and make a copy of that 
and then use that for your development system from there on out. Uh, the, the more difficult thing is small changes and how do you test those and how do you promote those and so on. Because we're running in an automated environment, um, and in some cases we have models that run every hour, three hours, six hours, and so on, it gives you a limited window of opportunity to make and test those changes, and you have to be very careful about doing that. So it, it's a challenge. Thank you. And uh, one last question for you before we uh, turn over to Roberto. How are customers managing AF database from a data retention perspective? Right. Another excellent question and, and something that we struggled with and identified early on that we needed to, to manage. Um, for us, we uh, retain uh, 13 months of data and we keep that online. Uh, with the version of SigmaFine that we're using, uh, the volume of cases that you have in the system can impact the performance. So we're purging on a regular basis um, cases so that we can maintain that performance. The newer versions of SigmaFine uh, that are running on the newer versions of AF, this shouldn't be as much of an issue, but it's something that still needs to be managed. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. And how does SigmaFine send information back to Pi? Uh, we use the built-in PyPoint data reference, and we configure the outputs to write back to Pi so that it, when the uh, customer is ready to send and data, ready to send data back to Pi, they just simply use the publish functionality of the AF, uh, AF control. That's, it's a very easy uh, configuration, and also it's a very easy operation. <laughs> Thank you. So it was an easy question and an easy answer. I think this next one is a little more difficult. How does SigmaSign segregate real-time mass balances from production accounting balances? Well, uh, we can segregate these at a security level. Uh, for example, production accounting, uh, accountants or yield accountants could use the whole uh, plan-wide balance while the engineers can just look at the data to perform mass balance in Excel. Or uh, another, another way is that you can have different spaces. Uh, yield accountants could have one logic database uh, to perform uh, yield accounting, while the real-time uh, applications could be using another model definition that can be scheduled automatically. Okay, thank you. And next one I think might even be more difficult. Is it possible to start with a simple mass balance and later implement more advanced analysis like energy balances? Right. Uh, yes. Um, Sigma Fine allows um, to configure, uh, let's say, a mass balance system initially. Uh, that could be a boundary model uh, or uh, not a very a very detailed model. And then, with time, it is possible to keep adding units into the balance. While you have uh, more information and you have analyzer information, then you can uh, change the analysis rule or create a parallel rule. Uh, to perform component balancing, let's say for gas or uh, for gas meters or analyzers, or in the case of metals and mining, uh, for the different online offline analyzers of the metal accounting, uh, metal accounting process. So it is very easy to leverage the existing definitions and, and existing models to uh, to use um, more advanced tools as you move forward. For example, that's the case of composition tracking, in which you start with a mass balance after you are uh, satisfied with that mass balance. Now you're ready to do composition tracking analysis. Thank you. And that was the last question we have time for today. And just to summarize then, with SigmaSign, Dow Corning has globally standard tools, timely and accurate, and they consider this key to ensure timely de deliveries to customers and minimizing costs associated with artificially high inventory levels. Thank you for listening to another innovative solution by PIMSoftink. For more information, check our website or contact us at sigmafine at pimsoftink.com. If you are ready for a discussion or a demonstration, please go ahead and schedule an inquiry also via our website, and we will reply to you the same day. As a takeaway, remember that when the mission is critical, data quality matters a lot and can make a tangible difference in the outcome.